Hey, Grant Hoska with DJI here. Thanks for joining this video on Flight Hub 2. We're going to cover some of the basics today, such as how to set up your Flight Hub 2 organization, connecting a drone and accepting the free quota so you can try everything out, different Flight Hub 2 plans, and then getting into some of the organization and project settings. Let's get started by navigating to the Flight Hub 2 site. To navigate to the Flight Hub 2 site, we're going to type in fh.dji.com. Upon arrival, you'll have the option to select between our global site with servers hosted in the United States or the European site with servers hosted in Europe. From there, you can go ahead and log in with your DJI account, which you probably have if you have flown with the DJI aircraft before or you can go ahead and register a new DJI account. To start here, we're gonna go ahead and create a new organization. Have some survey questions here that are optional to answer and generally just help the team decide what features to focus on building based on our users' demands and requirements. But you can go ahead and answer those if you'd like and then give yourself an organization name. So this could be company's name, organization's name. We'll just type an example department here and hit OK to continue. And this is gonna go ahead and take us to the project page. First, let's go ahead and create a project. We have an example one here. You can do some self-learning in with some guided steps, but we're going to create our own here. Your project is either going to be site specific, for example, a construction project, or can be for a team like patrol across a city. So in this case, we'll just uh, give the name to a park we are going to use for an example here. And then you can set a point of interest is where the map's going to center every time you enter this project. So in this case, we will type in the park name here center the map and set our point of interest. So whenever we open the project is where the map is going to default to. You can always move it directly to wherever drones or docks are operating, but it's a good starting point. We're gonna come back to the project settings here, but we're gonna go ahead and just create the project first. But we'll go back right now and hop over to the organization side. At this point in the Pilot2 app, we're going to connect our device to the Flight Hub 2 organization. First, let's tap on the person icon in the top left to make sure we're logged into the DJI account that we're using with our organization. Then tap on Cloud Services and Flight Hub 2. From there, we'll be able to select the project that we have just created and hit OK. You can sync any annotations that you've made already to the Flight Hub 2 organization. And now we'll select device binding under the settings where we can then bind the aircraft to the organization to get the free quota. Now that we've gone ahead and binded the aircraft, we can come here into our organization settings and click to receive free cloud quotas. That's the Matrice 4T. We'll click OK, and now we can see it's been received successfully. So if we go ahead and refresh this page, we can see that we now have storage, mapping, and live streaming to try the different features out. A few more things to run through here in the organization settings. First, you can click on the Edit button next to your organization name. You can edit the name. You can enable two-factor authentication for login. So you can use something like Google Authenticator. If you have a professional enterprise plan, you can update the organization logo. You can choose metric Imperial, Celsius, or Fahrenheit. Choose Imperial and Fahrenheit here and select OK. In the top right is where you'd configure any of the APIs you're going to be using. And then here on the right side, you could activate any Flight Hub 2 plans that you've bought from our website or a dealer. And the upgrade icon will take you directly to our website if you'd like to see pricing information. By tapping upgrade, you can see some of the different plans that we have available. So 
like to break it down into the four function settings here. The standard version or free really doesn't have many features, but you can certainly plan missions on the cloud and send them to pilots in the field. It's a good free feature to utilize and try out. The professional version and enterprise version are our two paid options for our cloud service. You can see you're able to create unlimited quantities, but really the main difference between these is the device quantity. For the professional version, you can simply add as many devices as you want, while the enterprise version is going to be paying per device that you have online. So if you had three docs, those are always going to be online, so you would need three enterprise version packages. Or if you had multiple people operating drones in the field and you were going to have at most four drones going at once, once again, you'd want to make sure to have four enterprise version packages here. Both will allow you to replace the logo. And then you can see here the difference in the live stream storage and mapping. For the professional version, you're going to get a specific amount per month while the enterprise version is really unlimited for live streaming and storage and nearly unlimited for mapping, really just depending on how much you're running. You can also display models, utilize our open API, and then we do have the product pricing, which we'll cover here shortly. But the idea here is with the professional version, it's more like pay as you go, right? You have a set allocation uh, per month for the live stream and the mapping quantity, and then you have 500 gigabytes of storage. But we do have upgrade packages for live streaming, mapping, and storage that you can add on top for the professional version. The enterprise version, the idea really here is that you're paying per device, and then you have unlimited or nearly unlimited uh, capabilities for each of those. So we can Click the buy now in the top right. Take us over to our next tab here if you do want to see pricing information. But you can see the base professional version for a month is $99 a month or $999 in US dollars here. The idea would be maybe your agency gets the professional version and then maybe figure out you're doing more live streaming. So you could buy an additional 10,000 live streaming minutes or 100,000 live streaming minutes. And we'll go through how that's consumed a bit more in the next video. But essentially, anytime someone is watching a live feed from the drone, the dock, or the dock camera, each one of those feeds consumes live streaming minutes. Conversely, we have the enterprise version we talked about here, where you can get it for one year for a device or three years for a device. And then you can also add on additional online device expansions. So with that all being said here, for the case where we talk about having three docs, you would need to get a one year, one device plan, plus two additional device expansions to be able to have three devices online for the year. In our Flight Hub 2 user manual under package and billing details, we have lots more information. Let's take a look at Flight Hub 2 as a whole now that we have gone ahead and set up our organization. Here at the top are our main tabs. Algorithms is where you can control algorithms for Matrice 4 and Doc 3 series from Flight Hub 2. Devices is where you can see our current docs and aircrafts, including device information, current firmware version, and status. Members is where we control who is part of the organization and what privileges that they have. So we can see ourselves here being the super admin, given that we have created the organization. You can add additional members just based on their DJI account that they use. So we'll say example member here. It's important to add members to both the organization and the specific project that you're using because each person who is going to be pushing a live stream needs to have their own DJI account. 
if you're going to have multiple live streams going, the different people logging in need to have their own DJI account and same deal for people on different computers because there is location information included. We can't have the same DJI account logging in from multiple sources. So let's go ahead and add a member here. And you can see their role in the organization is a member. Under member role management, you can see both project and organization roles here. Organization is going to be all of the admin stuff, right? Adding devices, adding members, creating projects, all of this organization stuff, right? Do you want someone to be an admin or do you want them to be a member or one of the other options we have here? And then specifically within the projects, we have some default roles here for what they can do in the project where they're going to be flying, you're going to be seeing the live feed, there's additional tools and capabilities available there. So we kind of have these default roles for members, or you can go ahead and create your own project role with specific criteria. Generally speaking, the admin role would be someone you want to have the management capabilities for the project, while the member would be someone who's maybe pushing a live stream or just logging in to view information. But now that we have added our members, we binded the device to the organization, we can come back to the projects here and get into this a little bit more. To enter a project, you can always hit the little arrow key that goes into the project. And the three dots up here allow you to edit the project settings, archive it, or delete it. We did jump ahead a bit here because we wanted to create the project first. But let's go back into editing the project here to take a look at some of the other options here. So back in our project settings here, a few key ones to cover. You have the option to set a coordinate system for the project settings here. You can allow team members in the field or someone, maybe an agency providing mutual aid to join the project using a code. They'll also need the project ID. So they can do that instead of logging in with the DJI account that you've added to the project. The next couple here are doc related for weather or multi-drone operations. Recording settings here would go from the dock or aircraft itself and automatically recording when one is live streaming. The sharing settings here, do you want folks to be able to share the live stream or media files within the project? And then finally down here is where you add members. So first you need to add the member to the organization like we have already done. And then you can go ahead and add them into the project. So you can see by default, they're going to be a project member. And we who have created the project are going to be the admin. This is a good setup if they're gonna be in the field, pushing the live stream. And then you're gonna be back here, maybe at the command center and want to have the admin capabilities within the project, but can always come back here and edit the project settings. So we'll go ahead and hit done and then hop into the project itself. You can always go back into the project settings down here in the bottom left if you do need to. But wanted to cover the kind of team and the main map view here where you're going to be conducting live operations from, right? Running through some of the settings here on the bottom right, the 3D is able to move the map. And you can see we can go over to here, someone with a little bit more elevation, but we call it a 2.5D map. It's overlaying the satellite view over elevation data. So you have an idea of what that elevation looks like. With the eye here, you can go ahead and display custom flight areas, unlocking zones, or geo zones. The aircraft here is going to be for ADSB in information that the aircraft is receiving. The recenter button or center us back here to our POI. Zoom in, zoom out, fairly self explanatory. And then we can turn on satellite or standard. We can turn the road network on and off. And then if you are displaying 
or overlaying 2D maps or models on the map, you have the ability to determine the quality here. So it would take a little bit longer to load, but it's going to be a bit clearer. Here on the bottom left, you can look at the different shortcuts for the mouse and keyboard. So zooming in and out, obviously with the scroll wheel or two fingers on a trackpad, obviously useful. The other one is holding down the control key and then rotating the map allows you to go into 3D and back to 2D. So when we have drones up in the air, it's really going to give us a good view there. One other thing to notice here on the left side, you have a little icon that pops out for what each item is. We have our overall team page where you conduct and view flight operations. Annotations will be points, lines, polygons, circles, and your ability to manage those. Map photos, if you want to overlay photos onto the map. Same idea for models. Map task area will allow you to stop fly, no fly zones, and no landing zones. Well, specifically for dock operations, but also works with some of our newer aircraft as well, like the Matrice 4 series and M400. Flight route library is where we can plan out automated flight operations. Task plan library gives you the ability to plan out tasks for docks. Media library can view all of media that's been uploaded to the project, like photos, videos, and panoramas. Model library gives you the ability to view models you've uploaded from the desktop process, maybe in Terra, or it also allows you to process imagery into 2D maps and 3D models and manage those models. And then down here, this is our analyzer information, which is a bit more focused on AEC construction, mining side of the house, but within the different options here of analyzer, automated workflows, design files, and design files on maps, one's able to set up automated workflows to fly from a dock, process the imagery, and generate reports with items like cut and fill, and then overlay design files that are in like a DXF format, as well as control the display of those design files on the map. Finally, here in the bottom left, you'll see your current online status and then the ability to go back out of the project. We'll get into the live streaming a little bit later as part of our next module. Hope you're able to join us for. One other key item is the little chat icon here on the right side. You can utilize a AI assistant for questions, contact DJI support, view FAQs, navigate to the Flight Hub 2 user manual, which has very detailed information on each part available, and then also watch additional tutorial videos as well. Thank you.